Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mary Kay and thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you for being here. For the new subscribers, we say hi by hitting that subscribe button. Please make it a point of watching the whole video. Thank you. So, on this dress, you're going to be making a dress. Oh, on this video, <laughs> we're going to be making a dress. Now, it can either be a peplum dress, if that's a thing, circular dress, or a skater dress. Either is okay. So, we're going to be talking about the two ways you can make the dress later on in the video. But, for now, please make a step of watching the full yoke tutorial, which I am linking here. Uh, so that you get to understand what we are doing. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just dive right in on the video. I hope you enjoy. Now, I have a full uh, video dedicated on how to make a yoke. I would suggest you go watch that one because it's a step-by-step -step, um, video explanation of how to make the yoke because um in this one i'll just be breezing through because if i have to start from the beginning and explain everything that will take more than 10 minutes on this video so please go ahead and watch it i'll leave um i'll direct you on which video it is but as of now these are some of the um just some of the steps that you need to follow we have number one to six on how to make your yoke. I simplified it for you. So yeah, that's what you're going to do. Now, one more thing to put into um, your equation as you're making your top. If you are touching it here and not using a zipper, your measurements will need to be big enough at the neck because you're starting from top, working our way downwards. It's going to be big enough to fit your neck your head when you're wearing it big enough that it stretches and is able to fit your head once you're wearing it that is a big big factor to consider now so let's get started grab your hook your yarn and you're going to need four stitch markers i use safety pins so you're going to need four stitch markers your hook your yarn and your tape measure and your yoke measurements all right now, once you have your tape measure and your yarn, we're going to first of all start with making a slip knot. Once you have that, remember we do not make chaining rows here. We start by making three stitches. Once you have your three stitches, because uh, for this project we are working with half doubles. Now, you're going to yarn over after your three stitches, you're going to yarn over. Go to the very first stitch that you just made and insert your hook. Yarn over and pull through. You're going to have three loops in your hook now. With these three loops, you're going to be working on a chaining row and the first row. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook on the very first one and pull through just on that one. And then three loops on your hook once again, yarn over and pull through everything. Next thing, you yarn over, twist your work, there is some two loops at the very end, that is where you're going to insert your hook and shoot both loops, yarn over and pull through, three loops on your hook, now let's make our chaining row, you yarn over, pull through just the first one, again you'll still have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through everything, repeat, yarn over, twist your work, Two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, make your chaining row by pulling through just the first one. Again, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through everything. Now that you have your yoke measurements, you already know, you already know um, the number of stitches you're going to make. As you can see here, there's this number 136 and please note this is not what I used. This was for um uh, for that video that I made explaining all of this, but this is just an example. You're going to have a total number of the chains that you're going to need, including the increasing rows, the one stitch you're going to add after each and every one, where you're going to put your your stitch markers. Now go ahead. 
make the number of stitches that you need and I will meet you right back. We are going to assume that this is the length that we need and please bear with me and go watch that video before watching this one. That is if you don't know how to make a yoke. So the next step after you have your length, after you followed the steps on the video again, you're going to insert your hooks on their respective places. Now, remember, if you're not using a zipper, then uh, on your last stitch, you're going to need to attach to the other side. So you do as usual, make your chaining draw, and then you grab the other side, pull it, and sure it's straight. Remember that, ensure that it is straight. You're going to insert your hook on the very first stitch that you made on the other side, and over, and just pull through everything now you're going to chain one i always chain one instead of the three it confuses me a lot so i just chain one and then turn your work yarn over and you're working in both loops and put your half double and continue half double all through and when you get to your stitch marker you're going to remove it and put three stitches on the same loop three stitches on the same stitch remove your stitch marker three half doubles one two three And you're good to go now once you have your three you're going to take your hook and on the middle stitch the second stitch that is where you're going to put it back and continue you're going to continue doing this until you have a good enough length that is going to fit your bust that's it that is basically what you're going to do once you get there I will meet you there again please go watch uh, my how to make a yoke video I will link it up so that you understand that is if you don't know how to make a yoke this is what you're going to need to have by the time you're done with your yoke I made mine up to 15 inches because it's going to stretch and I need it a bit tight on my body so this is what you're going to have and you're going to need to do a lot of measuring especially from this part to here and then you're also going to need to measure from here to here and the length so those are three portions that you need to measure now remember like i said earlier you can make this top two ways either with this seam or with a zipper so if you were to use a zipper you didn't need to attach um so now what you're going to do is we're going to attach this two so that now we can start working on our body portion and this next part we're going to work it until we are close to our belly button which is where now we're going to start increasing to have our um the peplum part i think that's what it's called so now what you're going to do we are going to continue working the same same way all the way from here from where you turned up to where you have your first stitch marker this is where you're going to stop okay so let me meet you there so when you get here you're going to remove your stitch marker and put your next half double in that side stitch marker so we're going to just continue working it normally because this kind of top you're making doesn't require us to add any increases now um maybe later on i'm going to do a tutorial where i show you how to add on stitches on on the side to increase the length of your bust area but this is my first um stitch marker and i just put my half double and the next side this side you're going to remove my next stitch marker 
and put a half double as usual. Now remember one thing, we are working from here, from the uh, back in circle. When we get here, we're not going to continue to the hand side because we're just we're done with that for now. Actually, we're just we're done with the hands completely. So we're just going to now start working round. Now this is what now we would call the chest area. So when you get here, we are going to start working towards this direction. So what I mean by that is you're going to twist your work, remove this stitch marker, and put in your next half double as usual, just normally. It's going to be a bit stretched, but that's okay can work with that and just continue until we get to the next stitch marker where we're going to do the same thing and voila that's it we're just now going to start working on it until we get to our belly button where we're going now to start making the peplum so let me meet in my next stitch marker so that i remind you so next stitch marker you're going to remove it you put your half double as usual come to the other side remove the stitch marker and just put your half double literally that is it that's it and you just continue as usual you just continue as usual putting your half doubles all the way to the to the center back once you get there you turn your work proceed and i will meet you once i have a length that i need before i start making my peplum which is going to be around my belly button from where i am so yeah i'll see you in a bit when i have my top i hope you're enjoying the video so far if so please don't forget to like share and leave me a comment Okay, so here we are. We have the length that we need to start making the increase. Now, I have four of my stitch markers. Now, here's the catch. You can do more than four, but I am going to do four. So, the explanation here is you can either... First things first, you're going to calculate and see the number of stitches that you have. And then the next decision you're going to make, you're going to decide whether you want to put your first one here, your second one at the other end, and then you divide the other two, one from the front and the other one from the back. Or you can do two from the front and two from the back, which is what I'm going to go with. And... um. We're going to be doing the one row increase, one normal row uh, pattern so that we don't end up with such a huge increment. We just need a subtle one where, you know, where the design is just going to pop out just slowly by itself without too much work and too much exaggeration. So there's mine. I have counted the stitches in between here and at the back and ensure they're all equal so that's it we're just going now to get started and remember um it's up to you how many of these increases you want to have but uh just for you to get an idea of what we're doing we're going to be giving doing normal increases just like the way we have been doing the way we started doing that's what you're going to be doing. Um, so yeah, I figured four would be subtle because, you know. Yeah, so let's dive in. We're going to continue doing the same thing we were doing. Um, and I will meet you at our first increase so that we do this once again. So here we are. You're going to remove your stitch marker. And then you're going to put three half doubles in the same stitch that is our increase and on the second one that is where you're going to put back your stitch marker again like i said similar way so you're going to continue 
putting a single double crochet in each stitch until you get to your stitch marker which is where you're going to put your increase now for the sake of the video not being extremely long what we have done here is what you're going to do here here and here all through now this is the first row uh, let me go round and finish the row and I will meet you back here so that we do our normal row and then from there I will leave you to it so that you proceed here we are so what we are going to do is this row now that is after our first increase row we are going to not be increasing to just be a plain row a normal row a row without increment so when you get to your stitch marker you remove it put one ouch, <laughs> put one stitch return your stitch marker and continue that is what you're going to do for the second row now that's what we're going to be alternating that's how we're going to be doing it now one increase row the next normal row that's how we're going to alternate now from the normal row we're going to do an increase from the increase you're going to go to the next one so we're going to meet when i have my complete item here we are with a finished product so this is my length i started increasing somewhere from here all the way i did not count my rows because like as i've always said the number of, of rows i make do not matter because one we may not be using the same hook the same yarn and we may not be the same size so your tape measure as i always say is your best friend so there are two ways of finishing off this dress after you get your peplum part way number one you're going to when you get to um the length of your top you're going to need to make a decision whether you want to continue increasing all the way down or you're going to need to stop increasing and just go with normal rows those are the two ways that you can uh do that they are both going to give great results um, because uh, your dress, if you choose the continuing increasing way, your dress is going to look super cute, just like the peplum. Um, it's going to be a bit bouncy, which is good, and this is also bouncy. I chose to continue with this way because this this was the harder part of figuring how the dress would look like. So I figured, let me just show you how it would look like when you stop um, the increment. Now, what it looks like is like a balloon dress. Look at that. It looks like a cute cute balloon dress uh yeah so those are the two ways you can uh finish off your dress and remember again there are multiple ways of tying it just like that or and this other side or without tying these ones you can just use a belt or if you have have any of those cute belts you can also use them the point of this kind of tying is so that it give it gives shape and if you continue with the increasing it's going to be a bit flattering but here's a disclaimer if you continue with the increase it would be best if you used a belt or the chain to just make a belt but if you used this size, this um the no increment way after a certain point, you're going to need to do this so that it shapes it and you can fluff it out. Now when you've shaped it and then I'll just fluff it out, it's going to look super cute and nice. Yeah, so that is it. Thank you really for stopping by and watching this video. I appreciate it and I appreciate you for watching to the end. If you make yours, please let me know. You can also send it to me on my DM at Mary Kay's Designs. I hope you've enjoyed it and I cannot wait to see the colors that you use. So thank you and see you next week. Bye!